At this point, you should be remoted into your new server and have Team Foundation Server Installation Media sitting on your desktop. So we can go ahead and start that process. Don't click the shortcut, just double click on the TFS Express and Setup, and we'll start the wizard. We're going to set up using all the defaults so that we can streamline the process here. So go ahead and install that because I set up my administrator account. I'm going to use that one. All right, once the setup's complete, we can go ahead and restart. I notice that sometimes that restart doesn't work. And since you're promoted into a virtual machine, you can't just restart from here. So you could just do this, type command, run as admin, go shut down, dash R, dash T, one, your server will restart. All right, so at this point, Team Foundation server's been installed, but nothing's been configured. So you should be able to hit start and find the Microsoft Visual Studio Team Foundation Server folder here in your shortcuts. Click that and there should be a link to the admin console here. And you need to run that with your admin credentials. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and click the application tier here. Click this configure install features link. And this is where we're going to set up Team Foundation Server. Click the link, hit Start Wizard, and this is optional. If you're if you're isolated from the internet, go ahead and select No. Otherwise, do what you want. Hit Next. This is going to be a new Team Foundation Server deployment. So go ahead and hit Next. And for simplicity purposes, we're going to hit the Basic deployment right here. Notice that I got rid of a bunch of options here. All of those extra items you can configure later if you want to but we're just gonna get this thing up and running first. Basic deployment, hit next. Language, select your language and hit next. We're gonna install SQL Server Express for this because it's free and it came with the installer. Uh, so go ahead and select that and hit next unless you have a SQL Server instance available. The application tier, we're gonna set this at default and this is just gonna be HTTP, which is clearly not secure. So one of the things that you'll wanna do after you set this up is obtain a certificate and set up HTTPS on the server so that you can have that uh, that layer of security for, for the, the web interface. But for the purposes of this tutorial, we're just going to use the default settings with just HTTP. The search services require a significant amount of resources that I did not give this virtual machine, which I believe is an extra, uh, I think it calls for an extra 50 gigs of hard drive space, 8 gigs of RAM, and at least uh, four processors on the virtual machine for up to 250 users. So if you allotted those resources and want to install the, that capability, uh, go ahead and select the option here. However, I'm not going to cover that in this tutorial and you could always come back and install that later. We'll unselect that. It's going to review all of your options. You hit next. It's going to do some readiness checks to verify that it can complete the ins installation. Everything should be green. All right, and go ahead and hit configure. This installation process takes about 45 minutes, so you could just kick it off and go find something to do for a while and come back to this. Once the setup's finished, you can go ahead and click Next. Check out the logs if you like. Otherwise, go ahead and close the wizard and close the configuration center. Now, under the application tier, there's a public URL for the website, for the web interface for your TFS now. So go ahead and copy that and go to your local machine and point a browser at that URL. And now you're going to have to use the credentials you made, your administrative credentials, so TFS-demos, computer name, and then your administrative account. I've also noticed that the first time that you hit this web interface, uh, a lot of times that it, it takes a long time to load. Go ahead and just sit and watch it for a while, but eventually the TFS web interface will show up. All right, so once the web interface is loaded, now you just uh, have to create a project. So we'll go test project, give it a description, whatever. You can use Git or T, T, TFVS, 
TFVC for version control and select the template for your work item processes and go ahead and hit create. And this process takes a few minutes as well. Okay, so once your uh, project has been created, notice you're still logged in with your, your admin account here. You're gonna wanna add your regular user account as a member of the team so that you can use your regular user account. All right, so there's my admin account and my regular user account. So, and they're both members of this team now. So I can go ahead and log out of my admin account and then log in with my regular user account. All right, so now I have a project. I can go configure a dashboard. Um, I could connect it to Visual Studio and start to submitting code to the repository and go to the work area build and release we can't quite do you can start setting it up but you'll need a build agent to actually do anything with that a test plans wiki etc at this point your team foundation server instance is set up with a project that has source control a workflow and test tools available if you follow this guide verbatim then there are a couple of configuration changes you might want to make if you plan to actually try and use this for your project. First, you'll want to obtain a certificate for your server so that you can configure the web in interface for HTTPS instead of just HTTP so that the web interface connection is encrypted. This will also encrypt the connection from Visual Studio and any build agents that you set up. Another configuration change I would suggest is to join the server to a domain and use domain groups and accounts rather than local groups and accounts on that server. I did it that way in this tutorial just to simplify the setup. You may also want to go back to your server's remote desktop configuration and recheck that option to only allow network level access. And also go back and disable that default administrator account. Those are just a few of the things that I'm thinking of off the top of my head. And I'm sure there are plenty of other customizations and configurations that you'd want to do for both performance and security concerns. Thanks for watching, and if you have any questions or comments, please let me know in the comments below.